Hello everyone, this is the second video for the day. So if you haven't seen my other video on this channel, which is about exponential equations, go ahead and check it out because that's a really interesting tower problem. Anyways, for this video, we're going to be solving a Diophantine equation. A Diophantine equation is basically an equation with integer solutions, right? So the solutions are integers x is an, I mean, not x, m is an integer, and we're going to solve for m. So how do we solve a Diophantine equation? First of all, let me tell you, a Diophantine equation, uh, you may have several variables, but uh, the number of equations that you have may be fewer than the number of variables. Because the answers are integers, it's sometimes possible to solve. In this case, we only have a single variable, but the only requirement is that m is an integer. Okay, great. So let's go ahead and see how we can solve this problem. I'm going to start by adding, and I apologize if I have done this problem before, a long time ago maybe, because it kind of looks familiar. I'm not exactly sure. I'm pretty sure you're going to let me know if I did that. But I'm hoping that even if I did it before, this is going to be a different experience. So I'm going to start by adding m cubed to both sides. Let's go ahead and do that first. That kind of brings the m cubed plus 1 together. And then here's the motivation. First of all, why am I doing it, right? Would I do this if I had something like 27 to the m minus m cubed? Maybe. Just I just made it up. And there may be another number on the right-hand side. It doesn't have to be 1. I probably wouldn't do it. You know why? Let me just tell you real quick. Because this is a perfect cube. This is a perfect cube. So this guy over here is a difference of two cubes. So I would probably just factor it directly. But my expression is not factorable. Obviously, I don't have that, right? This is different. So I can't do it. But if I add m cubed, m cubed plus 1 is actually factorable. Why? Think about it for a second. Because it's the sum of two cubes. 1 can be written as 1 cubed, right? So now we can go ahead and do the following. Factor this using the formula for sum of two cubes, m plus 1. The other one is m squared minus m plus 1. Remember that? This is a super duper important formula if you are studying algebra for pretty much anything else. Now, we have this interesting power of 3 on the left hand side and 2 factors on the right hand side. So here's a question. If m is an integer, 3 to the power m is also an integer. Can you get an integer power of 3, or I could just say a power of 3, without multiplying powers of 3? Like, can I multiply powers of 2 and powers of 5 to get a power of 3? No, it's impossible. You have to use powers of 3. So, these also need to be powers of 3. But what are they? Let's go ahead and call this 3 to the power n, and let's call this 3 to the power k. n and k are integers again. And what do you know? Their product is going to be 3 to the power n plus k. Therefore, m is made up of n and k. So, in other words, m is equal to n plus k. That is an important piece of information. Let's go ahead and save it for future use. The next thing we're going to do is write each of these equations as equations. m squared minus m plus 1, I set it equal to 3 to the power k. And then I set m plus 1 equal to 3 to the power n. Great. This gives us a system, but it has three unknowns. That's fine. We have another equation. Make sense? So hopefully we'll be able to solve this. And the fact that these are integers makes it a lot easier. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to make this expression. Oops, I didn't mean to make a straight line. I want to, I want to make this expression look like this. How can I do that? So here's what we're going to do. We're going to take this. First of all, start with m plus 1, but I do need m squared. So let's square this. And by the way, uh, this is, they're not equal. So let's just maybe use an arrow or something. Okay. So from here, I want to square this first. I want to get to that, okay, eventually. That gives me m squared plus 2m plus 1. Great. That's not what I have, but I can get there. So let's go ahead and try to set it equal to this. And then I'm going to add, a subtra add or subtract some terms. So to, to get what I need... I have a negative m on the left-hand side. I need to subtract 3m. So far, I got my expression. But we had to introduce an additional m. And I always want to make 
this expression look like m plus 1. So this is my key, okay? That should be my new variable, in other words. Make sense? Another way to, I think, achieve this is probably isolate m from here and then plug it into this equation. I didn't do it that way. I think this is more fun. Anyways, so I'm going to follow this negative 3m by a negative 3 so I can quickly get a m plus 1 here. You see the trick? Mathematicians are full of tricks. By the way, I'm not a mathematician. I just act like a mathematician. Okay, anyways, whatever. <laughs> so I subtracted 3 and added 3 because it has to balance because before that I had the right expression. But notice that I can now arrange my terms very nicely. Notice what I got. Or should I say, look what I found. You know that song? Anyways, so now I have m plus 1 everywhere. Beautiful. So that's my new variable. So, but, and I do have something for that. m plus 1 is equal to 3 to the power n. So now we can go ahead and replace this with 3 to the n, replace this with 3 to the n. What about the left-hand side? That is 3 to the k, right? Uh, by our assumption. So I kind of go from the m world to the k and n world. Make sense? Because it's easier to solve in the k and n world. You'll see in a little bit why using k and n is such a good idea here. Okay? Ready? So now we have 3 to the k equals 3 to the n squared, which is 3 to the power 2n, minus 3 to the first times 3 to the n, which is 3 to the power n plus 1, plus 3. Beautiful. A power of 3 made up of powers of 3. Beautiful. But there's a plus minus situation here. Let's go ahead and fix it and bring this minus guy over here. So we can be more balanced, 3 to the k plus 3 to the n plus 1 equals 3 to the power 2n plus 3 to the power 1. You don't have to write the 1, I just wanted to write it for, I don't know, completeness sake maybe. Now, what do we do with this? Again, the same scenario. You're adding two powers of 3 and you get an answer that's going to be unique. Kind of like the binary but tertiary, is that how you say it? Tertiary, something like that, 3. So base 3. The numbers are unique, so you can only write them in one way. So we kind of have to compare these sides. When I compare them, I either have to go by this, like these two have to be equal, and then these two have to be equal, otherwise this is not going to work, or the other way around. So one possibility is, okay, I can have 3 to the k equals 3 to the 2n, and 3 to the n plus 1 equals 3 to the power 1. That's one system. Another system is... Uh, what is it called? Uh, Crisscross applesauce. I can also compare like this. Uh oh. Oh, come on. Come on, notabilities. Calm down. 3 to k equals 3 to the 1, and 3 to the n plus 1 equals 3 to the power 2n. So I have two packets. I'm going to have to solve each one. These are both systems, and they should hopefully work. Now, from the first one, I got k equals 2n, and n equals 0, which means k and n are both zero. Is that going to work? We'll see. We'll, we'll check it out. And from the second one, I'm getting k equals 1 and n equals 1. Hmm, interesting. But wait a minute. I'm not interested in k and n. I want m, right? That's our main variable. How do we get there? Easy. m is equal to n plus k. All you have to do is add these numbers. Easy, like two letters. Easy, right? So m equals 0 in this case. And in this case, m is equal to 2. Now let's go ahead and check these values out with our original problem and then we'll finish, okay? Just hang in there. Not done yet. Okay, let's go ahead and check it out. If m is 0, we get 3 to the power 0 minus 0, which is 1 minus 0, which is 1. Awesome, that checks. With m equals 2, we get 3 to the second minus 2 cubed and that's equal to 9 minus 8, which is equal to 1. That also checks. Therefore, both of these solutions are valid. And... Those are the only, only, only solutions. And this brings us to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. Please let me know. Don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. I'll see you next time with another video. Until then, be safe, take care, and bye-bye.